We exposed the BBC with thousands of people outside their offices in Manchester. The British public do not trust you anymore. Being arrested? I am being arrested. I'm, I've, caused a, the, uh, I'm be, I've caused a breach of peace. I'm being arrested. But the content of what you're uh, just streaming. The content of what I'm streaming. I'm being arrested for breach of the peace. I'm being arrested for breach of the peace. You've all watched this. You've all watched this. You've all watched this. You've all watched this. Can you get me a slitter? Can you get me a slitter? Can you just turn off your light feet? Can you get me a slitter? Turn off your light feet, please. Yeah. Since my activism started over a decade ago, the establishment, the police and the media have all been trying to take me down. The whole world saw me wrongfully imprisoned last year. Two and a half months on solitary confinement. What was the response by the media to that unlawful detention? They justified it. They lied to you. All of them reported that I pled guilty. None of them got the transcripts from the court. None of them reported the truth. We have a corrupt media. When I went to prison and 600,000 people signed a petition for my release, 30,000 people marched here demanding my release. When I come out of prison, I was completely unaware of the lengths that they were going to to take me down. My PayPal was removed. That removes my ability to hire a team and work and bring you the other side of the story. My website was closed down, but I was completely unaware that Panorama, the world's leading investigative journalist documentary, were working on a program about me with the working title, Tommy Takedown. This was their final punch. They were about to discredit me to the nation, to you, the public. And I will prove that that documentary is not impartial, that it's scripted, that they invent things, that they lie, that they clip, that they edit. What you will witness in this documentary will prove to you this isn't about Tommy Robinson. This is about all the people that have been lied to, all the people who have been mislabeled, despite all their efforts to silence me. It became very apparent that something far more sinister was going on. With the collusion between the establishment, Panorama, and a far left extremist organization called Hope Not Hate, you're gonna hear about the tactics they use to get the narrative they want. In this documentary, you're going to hear a lot about Hope Not Hate. It's important you understand who they are. Hope Not Hate is a so-called anti-fascist organisation who formed in 2004. They formed from a group and a magazine called Searchlight. Nick Lowell, who now leads Hope Not Hate, was a lead member of Searchlight. In 1984, Searchlight worked alongside Panorama to fraudulently edit footage which they were prosecuted or taken to court and sued for. They paid a million pound damages to conservative MPs who they wrongfully edited footage to link them with far-right extremist groups. Hope Not Hate brand themselves as an anti-fascist organisation. They're there to tackle fascism. In reality, they label, slander and attack anyone who speaks out against open borders or against Islam. The worrying thing is they have a lot of influence. For example, all media outlets across the UK, across the world, take what they say is credible and they work hand in hand with them. From CNN, The Guardian, Huffington Post, The Independent, Sky News, Newsnight, Panorama, The Metro, The Sunday Times. They even advise the UN. They advise counter-terrorism. In their advice to the UN, they say that our Day for Freedom demonstration that many of you would have watched was a far-right extremist rally. That's fake news. 
being given as credible information and taken as expert info by the UN. Art Day for Freedom demonstration had homosexual speakers, drag artists, black speakers, Asian speakers. There was nothing far right against it. It was a liberal demonstration demanding free speech. So what happens is when someone gets censored on, on Twitter for some kind of uh, for, for hate speech or for ex incitement to violence or engaging in some kind of terrorist communication, they get their account taken down. They tend to come back, and that actually leads to a sort of uh, an increased level of, uh, of sense of participation and integration into these networks. So I do a lot of work looking into right-wing extremism in the United Kingdom and the United States. And one of the things that we've seen there is actually an entire mobilization of right-wing extremist activity around the concept of the freedom of speech being taken away from people. So just a few weeks ago in London, there was a march attended by a few thousand people that was called Day for Freedom, and that was entirely sort of centered around this issue of, uh, of free speech and the sense that the for in the kind of parlance of the extreme right, the liberal establishment was trying to silence uh, uh, extreme right, or, or sorry, legitimate conservative voices. Just last year, Hope Not Hate were identified in a Swedish military report on left-wing extremist violence. It has been proven that Hope Not Hate exaggerated hate crime figures by 3,000%. Nothing they said after that point should ever have been taken as credible, let alone taken by journalists without checking anything and spread around the world to demonise and slander people and organisations. They play a key role in pressurising social media giants, whether it be with petitions or requests from MPs that they're working alongside with to say who's promoting hate. Not who's promoting hate that would breach laws in this country, but who needs silencing with their opinion. They're now teaching your children in schools about fascism. If we take a quote from their original spin doctor, Dan Hodges, from his quote, you'll understand the tactics they use in this documentary. It was a no holds barred bare knuckle PR. We used every dirty, underhand, low down, unscrupulous trick in the book. These are quotes from their spin doctor, Joe Mulhell, who is a lead researcher for Hope Not Hate. He brags about days out with their BBC political reporters. Their relationship works hand in hand with the corrupt mainstream media. They do the reports, the media then use their ammunition and their labelling to attack people and organisations, to demonise them and slander them. In 2015, Joe Milhouse used the hashtag Antifa on several occasions. The reason why this is so relevant is when you understand who Antifa are. Antifa are an organisation that leading members of the American government have called to be prescribed as a terrorist organisation. They balaclava up, they mask up, and they violently attack people who they're told to attack, and organisations which are highlighted to them by groups and organisations like Hope Not Hate. They find out who you are, they contact your work, anyone who steps above the parapet. Hope Not Hate's goal is to silence them and stop them. This is about stopping free speech. This is about having people too scared to speak. We'll speak with one gentleman now whose life has been completely changed due to him voicing his opinions. He broke no law, committed no crime. But wait till you hear what Hope Not Hate done to him. This time last year, like I said, I was working full time, happy, and because of some things I was doing outside of work, where I sort of expressed my political opinions and so on, uh, I ended up drawing their fire, uh, and they wrote uh, a report and called it in to the employer. So it was a kind of deliberate attempt to it wasn't just to dox me, because I, I hadn't hidden my name, I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. I was just expressing an opinion. Uh, but it was an attempt to deliberately get me fired. Where was you working? I was working at Standard Chartered Bank in Moorgate. Doing what? Uh, I was an associate, so I'd been there from a grad. I went to Bristol University and then went into the bank straight afterwards. So I'd been there for about, just around 18 months at this point. So a good career? Yeah, it was going well. Internally, there'd been no issues. When, you say, when you say you got involved, you was giving your political opinions yep. with regards to... Uh, obviously, the controversial stuff, so immigration, uh, Islam, these kind of issues, but not, not in an extreme way, nothing you wouldn't happily say to anyone. Just so we can get clear, we're not talking about committing a crime, we're just talking about speaking openly about immigration and Islam. Yeah, and no, no one had a problem with it. That, that's the whole point that kind of strikes me about it. So it's it. not like anyone made a complaint, no, nothing's happened, so what, what's, what did Hope Not Hate do? So Hope Not Hate, one of their, I can't remember which, but a team of their researchers wrote a small report. They were calling up multiple officers uh, at the bank, uh, and they were also focusing, because obviously we have a very big presence in the Middle East. 
So they were focusing on officers there to call them and just basically say, you've got this guy working for you, he's an Islamophobe, he's a racist, blah, 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 all of which obviously isn't true. I remember I was just sitting at my desk and I get called in by the MD and he sort of says, are you, you know, have you been saying this? And I say, yeah, yeah, no, I have. I didn't see it as a problem. The same guys were going to a lot of journalists trying to flog this report as well to make a big story out of it. Eventually, in around the summer of last year, you get this article and it's very vicious and it's obviously largely lifted from the report that came out a few weeks earlier, you know, using slurs, using kind of nonsense labels, calling us Nazis, all that kind of thing. Calling you Nazis with any evidence? Was there no any evidence, evidence anything whatsoever, you've said? at all. It was made up with a very clear intention of making me lose my job. And it, it's a common tactic. And you did lose your job? Yeah, I was suspended and then on, once the coverage happened, they obviously, whilst previously, like internally, the bank, I think, had kind of thought, well, maybe this is, is just an attack piece. Once there was coverage, obviously, it's their reputation on the line. So then, pretty much immediately, I was fired. I have, I have so worked just, just, with... Just, just so that the public understand this, you committed no crime. Okay. You speak, outside of work, about immigration or Islam, with no hatred. No hatred. Just facts. And because of that, you're... Where are you now? How's your, how's your life changed? What do you see for your future now? Financially very difficult, of course, um, because it kills your, your income. Uh, and then there's knock-ons from that that are always a pain. OK, well, thanks, and I hope you... Um, I wish you luck and try and get your life sorted. Me too. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. So you've heard from Tom Dupree. You've heard how his life was changed simply for expressing his free speech due to the actions of hope not hate. Later on in this documentary, you'll hear recordings of Caelan Robertson and George Llewellyn John to see how their lives have been affected. Caelan and George used to work with me at Rebel Media, and when I went independent, they come to work with me there. When I was released from prison and I met with them, they said that they had been intimidated and threatened and for that reason they couldn't work with me. I'd just been released from prison. I wasn't in a good state. And I thought they were just saying that because they wanted to go and work with Lauren Southern. Also, you'll hear recordings from Lauren Southern. Lauren Southern is a leading political activist from Canada. She now works as a journalist making documentaries. In those recordings, you'll hear about allegations about how they've suffered due to the actions of Hope Not Hate. So I've been contacted by Lucy Brown, who's an ex-employee. The last time we spoke to each other, we were screaming obscenities at each other. Now, she's been contacted by Hope Not Hate and by Panorama, who are working together on a project against me. Working title, Tommy Takedown. So, I'm on the way to see Lucy. I'm actually really concerned and worried about what it is they're up to, because I know everything they've tried to do to take me down hasn't worked. So, let's see what's next. Last time I spoke to you, I screamed some obscene, some terrible things. So did I. I also have a surprise for you. Go on. <clears throat> I thought I'd, I'd commiserate it, so I actually got your no, no, no. prison number. No, you have To haven't. remind myself. <laughs> to no, remind myself the happiest day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> what? 8284 CG? Yeah, that's the oh one. Oh my god. I laughed my head off. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Lucy, you were fucking angry. <laughs> How have we ended up sitting here? And what are we talking about? Well, I received a very interesting email from one John Sweeney a couple of days ago, who is a big, was it BBC, BBC presenter for Panorama. Panorama? Yes, apparently he's quite well known. And he's asking if I want to go for a, first it was a cup of tea, but then it was a pint. Um, and he'll come all the way to Cambridge to see me and I think he wants some dirt on you. You was approached by Joe Mulhall? Joe Mulhall, yes, Hope I'm Not sorry. Hate. So you approached by Hope Not Hate, who told you, I've seen what they've told you, yep. they told you that there's a take Tommy down. There's a Tommy takedown. Tommy takedown. Yes, and they've been taken on as sort of advisors to the BBC to help them with interviews and to get information about you. How easy would it have been for you to... They offered me five grand no, for no. a front page story about you being a twat. What you could have done, you could have absolutely destroyed me and my life and my name yep. and my reputation. More so than that prison member did. More so than me going in prison could have done. Because you could have said anything and they would run. I've arranged to meet John Sweeney tomorrow <coughs> at 2pm and by the sounds of it, what these people do is they try and be your friend when you're vulnerable and they ply you with drink and they try to get you to say something that you wouldn't normally say. I want to show 
if what Lucy could have done, well, none of it would be factual, but what Lucy could have done. Now bear in mind, I, 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 I might not have been here. You could have just done this, yeah? Fake text messages, falsify sender numbers of text. So if you wanted to, my phone will be here. Let's change the number there. Now we'll keep that as reset. Let's put my number, yeah? So you respectively, as a disgruntled employee yeah, who yeah. fucking got my prison so number tattooed on your wrist. Joe Morgan's just messaged me. Let's take down I'm Tommy. Flat broke. I've got no means of income. I hate you. Joe Morgan's just messaged me saying I can get you some money to do Tommy in. So I can go to fakemytext.co.uk and I can make you text me and then I can show... Panorama. My phone's here. I'm at home, right. minding my own business. I've got Joe Mulhall there. Joe Mulhall offering, offering the takedown of Tommy Robinson. Offering you some money and you have said to me, what? If you have anything to do with the panel of me, I will fucking bury you, you bitch. No. Hang on, because I'm writing Y-O-U, but you write you. I write you. Sorry. I just need to make it some bad grammar because... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drop bad the T's because I don't pronounce my T. <laughs> I'm going to put W-I-V instead of with. This panorama, you wouldn't you wouldn't make that a capital letter. No, I put with. Don't with. I put with. Okay, all right. With this panorama doc. doc if you have anything to do with pan yeah, panorama doc. I will fucking bury you, comma. Bury you, you, you bitch. bitch. Just to prove, I could have nothing to do with this. I'm not, my phone's here. Yeah. So I've not sent you a message. Yeah, so let's wait. And the point is that they're actively searching with a far left organisation. They're actively working with my ex-employees to bring me down. I, what I want to prove here is how easy it is and how many other things in this documentary have been faked on me. If you had anything to do with this panorama doc, I will fucking bury you, you bitch. Can you focus on that? So I didn't send that. That sent from my computer. My phone has not sent you a single message. Now, Panorama are the biggest investigative journalists in the world. Yeah. So I don't see how this can work. If they wanted to do a proper investigative journalist, journalist piece, they should look at the crime that I committed. Was it criminal? Did the judge act out of law? Was I treat, were my human rights abused? One of the biggest cases in this country's history in fucking, in modern time, yeah? 600,000 people signed a petition, 30,000 people marching, ambassadors from the American government, every political party in Europe talking about it, the most talked about court case in decades, but they're not bothered about that. This is fake, yeah? This is gonna be falsified. This is not me. And I want to see if this, by a disgruntled ex-employee, could make its way around the world. I'd like to see how much power Hope Not Hate have over the world's media. Yeah, basically. This is the little minute, this will replace your button. Cool. This will go into your button anyway. This is how we'll record and are you nervous? No. You should be. <laughs> you should be. And well let's just wait and see what we get from this. Cool. Time will tell, but good luck. And don't do anything I wouldn't do. Thanks mate. See you later. Success? Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Let's see. Crazy? Not crazy? Good? Not good? Lots of alcohol was consumed tonight for the greater good. I can smell it. <laughs> You'll see. You You'll took see. it for the team. I only <laughs> drunk for the team. I did what I had to do. Right. Let's. Let's get these files sorted. Let's work out what we've got. We've got lots of footage to go through, but straight off the crazy thing for me is, you're steaming. Which is the champagne and the uh, uh, double gin. Thank you. And then we're going to have some red wine, oh, but you so we'll much. panic about that at the appropriate moment. <laughs> and I Thank you very much. Thank you. Here I am, on expenses, in a boozer, with the dog and the fire. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should have one more bottle of wine. Fuck it, no expense spared. Two yeah. brand new two lemon shallows. Um, this is from the Cassis, uh, uh, um, or the Kia Royale, but uh, even better is another version which is um, with um, uh, 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 blackberry, which, um, 
blackcurrant liqueur and champagne. Pierre Royale. Have you got any flaming sambuca? <laughs> and then two Pierre Royale. And then the bill. Lovely, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think we've got to do a runner. Uh, it's a joke. It's fine. It isn't. I don't care. Uh, it, uh, not only, uh, I really don't care. Good. Um, service included. So make it 2 two twenty. Thank you very much. <laughs> Was this on BBC Expenses? How much alcohol has been consumed? I've heard him mention three bottles of wine, champagne, flaming Zambuca, all in five minutes. And, you're, and you can hardly sit up. So, for me, that's an expensive scandal that the, with pay, the license fee payer is paying for. Should we be paying for you to get pissed? Yeah, 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 yeah. of course you think we should. Me getting drunk is me being more lucid and then I'll tell him stuff. That so he's wanting to get you drunk. He's using the expense money to get you drunk in order to get you information. Get me drunk, be nice to me, be my friend, and then I'll lose enough and be like, oh, I've got this recording, or you know, tell I you can this. tell you this, or whatever. Uh, uh, you may not yeah. like what I'm about to say, but one of uh, my political heroes um, is the, uh, the former head of the IRA, who turns the IRA, uh, not... Uh, um, who? Nick Lowell's? Uh, uh, no, um, <laughs> Uh, not um, uh, the guy got on well with the Queen. Um, so there are two of them. Uh, I should know that, but um, Daniel um, um, Danny uh, Danny McGuinness, I think his name is, and uh, and he got on anyway. He was the chief of staff the IRA. Hey man, I've heard the uh, Irish have been genocided. And, and uh, uh, last time I was there, they're okay. Martin McGuinness. His political hero is Martin McGuinness. Martin McGuinness, leader of the IRA. He's responsible for murder. Bombs. It's a strange person to have as your political hero. From, well, I don't know, from someone who's trying to paint me as extreme anyway. That is the sole reason I wanted to do this. For me, that is terrifying. How can they get that? How can he say he can do that from that innocent conversation or argument or disagreement, which has got nothing to do with that? So that is, that is the sole reason I wanted that footage, to see exactly what are... And that's terrifying for me to think, what the hell are they about to portray to this country about me? What the hell are they going to say? That's not the first time that's happened. In what sense? Because I told you about... I was offered five grand to do, like, a story on you, like a front-page newspaper story. But I hope not hate. You're talking about but in the kitchen. Not hate. But I was also... But I hope not hate who are working with these lot. Yeah, but I was also approached by a really mainstream um, newspaper, basically, to kind of make it out that you were, like, sexual allegations against me or something. But they were approaching you for that. At they a time said, when, we, when we fell out. Yeah, they said when it was at, when I was at my lowest and I basically didn't have a job and I was like, you know, a complete mess and they were trying to like dig and get stuff out of me and they were trying to make out that you'd done like a me too. They were trying to make out that you basically like abused me and then they wanted to put in, they, they, they kind of ran with and, and went back to their editor and then I called up and said, I really don't want this. This isn't true. You know, you've kind of twisted it to, to fit your own narrative here. And he said, well, I'm sorry, it's too late. I've already sent it to the editors and they he... want to run the story, this, this journalist. So I then had to call up like, you know, this uh, national journalist kind of like lawyery thing where you can call up and complain. And I had to put in writing saying, please do not put this out. If you put this out, I'm going to have to like, you know, go against you legally or something. Um, so I had to fight to get this story out of the uh, paper. From a mainstream journalist? From a top tabloid? Big, 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 big. big. In order to portray me as an abuse, essentially... Uh, me as a victim, yeah. But it wasn't true. With no truth, with no truth in it all? No. And that, and that, and that for my life... Do you know, the whole purpose in me wanting this, the whole reason why I've wanted to do this, is because I've been absolutely terrified of what they're doing. And that one little recording there, that one little recording there proves, proves that they will change what I'm doing and saying. This is massive. This is Britain's leading 
investigative journalist documentary by the BBC that we pay for. Creating, editing news in order to destroy my life. Now, John Sweeney's been contacting me for weeks now for a gotcha moment where he can interview me and throw all these accusations from God knows who at me. Well, that gotcha moment is now in my hands because I'm now going to sit down and I'm going to put these to John Sweeney to see how he justifies any of this. So for two weeks now, I've been emailing John Sweeney. They've been trying to get me to sit down for an interview. I emailed him yesterday and said, the only day I can do is today, and I won't come to London, it has to be in my venue. I've organised this venue. I've told them that I'm having a free speech event later in the evening. So we've prepared this projector with all of our undercover footage to try and find out and ask John, what exactly were you planning? What exactly are you doing? So rather than them grilling me, which is how they're expecting it to be with his executive producers, when they sit down... We will play through each clip. I'm going to go to my children's assembly now. When I come back, it's action. I'm nervous about it. See what happens. Right. 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 Just before we start, before we do start, I just want you, because I am paranoid um, of, of fair and balanced before it, I just wanted to clear a couple of things up with you while we're here. Is that all right before we start? Okay, but you're recording, I think, aren't you? You're okay. recording, so I'll see. That's fine. It goes, okay. That's okay. Fine. So okay. we're not starting yet. No, 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 that's something to be right. I just want to clear a So, this is a panorama documentary. You wouldn't be working with an organisation called Hope Not Hate on this documentary, would you? In order to find people to get negative opinions of me. No. no. That's what we're doing. <laughs> We're making a panorama documentary. The BBC makes all the editorial reports. Okay, so it's the BBC, because it'd be quite strange for the BBC to be, how the BBC could be impartial on a documentary when Hope Not Hate are an organisation who are funded specifically to destroy you. There are two separate entities. Okay. The BBC, I work for the BBC, this is the BBC panorama production. Okay, can I just quickly show you something here? So what, what this is, this is Joe Morehouse from Hope Not Hate. And what he says in this message is that Hope Not Hank are steering this documentary. My name's John Sweeney, okay. and I'm a reporter okay, John. for Panorama. Okay, John. So what this other guy says, okay. he's, he's, steering, he's not steering. Okay. Are, are you aware of any threats or blackmail that's been made to any of my ex-employees to give negative information about me to you? Are you aware? No. Can you just listen to this one? We were basically threatened with the most horrendous shit you can possibly imagine for three months, constantly, to do this. Constantly. Because basically, mm. the, what, why they have dirt on us is when we left Rebel, I, I don't know if I told you this, when we left Rebel, we were really fucking angry, um, and none of the media would take all the stuff we had on them. Mm. So Nick Close reached out to me on Twitter and he was like, oh, meet up with us. And we were like, oh, okay, like we weren't working with anyone then. So we were like, yeah, fuck it. And we met up with them twice and we were like, oh, um, we can write a book on rebel media. We can write a book on how they've scammed people and this and this and this and this and this. And we were like really conniving with them. One of the first things they started threatening us with, this only started three months ago. We had no contact with them between three months ago and leaving rebel, nothing. They started messaging us saying, we need to meet you. This is really serious. And then when we met them, they said to George, I wasn't, I wasn't there. Uh, we're going to release all of the meetings that you've had with us, threatening rebel media and talking shit about writing personalities and bitching about them. nothing serious, just saying other accounts. Um, and they're going to make you, and we're going to basically expose you. And also we've got six signatures from the top trade unionist organizations in the country saying that they're going to um, come after you and, and, and the government have opened a new department.
department which were advising on counter-terrorism, which are going to um, prosecute you for writing scripts which have incited the Darren Osborne terrorist attack. And it was like, the, like they were basically like, you're going to fucking go to jail and you're going to get exposed for meeting with us if, if you don't work with us. This is what it all comes down to, this panorama fucking thing. And Hope Not Hate were there, standing next to the BBC producers. When you went for the meeting with Panorama, who from Hope Not Hate was it? Nick, Joe, John Sweeney, and the producer. So, like, Hope Not Hate were, like, fucking terrifying, and they, like, did, you know, they blackmailed us, they felt like Joe fucking used the whole thing to try and get into Kalen's pants. This is how bad it really was. When, when we pulled up in London, this was the day I dropped off the suitcase to you, right? That I went straight off from, from there, I can't remember where it was, to go and do this interview with them. They hired out this big car park warehouse thing. They had a little chair in the middle of it. They sat down. I walked into this room, sat down. It was a cameraman. It was the head producer. It was Nick and it was Joe. And then I started getting really nervous because she was saying, how much money? Name numbers, name figures. And I was like, well, it was enough to pay for us to make videos and all the money was spent on it. And I was just saying vague shit. And then Joe said, can we stop the interview, please? And then I was like, okay. And then Nick went, can you come with us, Kaylin? And then Nick and Joe took me to the other side of the warehouse and said, Kaylin, you really need to give them more information than this. You really need to open up a little bit more because this is really not useful to them. They're probably not even going to use this. You need to go into specifics. You need to go into numbers. You need to at least show them something. Were they threatening you? At you... Breather, have a cigarette and we'll come back to it. Were they threatening you like, then? Okay. I had a cigarette and I went back and I sat down and I still couldn't really do it. And it was really bad. Like, I was, like, shaking the whole time. And that's when we told Panorama that we didn't feel that it was safe, that it was it was not okay, and that we were basically threatened. Bit of a strange one here, yeah? Wait a minute. I know. Sorry, man. It's for, I know it's, it's four o'clock in the morning here, but I've just got off the phone to Caelan for an hour, yeah? How much have they told you about Hope Not Hate? Not much. Why? You're aware they've been meeting with them regularly. I, I've met Joe too before. But yeah, I, I, like I know, I know that Kaylin and George have met with them before. Continually met with them when you was doing your borderless documentary. Hope not. Hate flew out to Italy to meet them. I don't know what they were talking about, but for the most part, like I think they're like they're just afraid of them. From what I've been told, it's like they're like, oh, they're kind of blackmailing us, like hang out with us, or or else we're going to get you guys arrested or whatever. So they just met with them. So, so hold on a second. Uh, I'm going for Panorama. Were Hope Not Hate present in that interview? Uh, Were Hope Not Hate present in that interview with Hayden Watts? I'm going for Panorama and we are doing a film about you. Are you aware of that? Are, are you aware of the show? Look at me. Yes. I'm the reporter and I'm asking you a question. Okay. 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 Right. I get the point. Are you aware of Are you aware of I don't know you want to ask one question about it. Are you aware of the indecent images that have been sent by someone from home not having to gain I'm aware I'm aware of the allegation. You are aware. I'm aware of an allegation, and I do not think it credible or serious. If I'm wrong, you can put that information out there. If somebody has been blackmailed, threatened, intimidated by an organisation that you're that is steering your documentary, it's not serious. Okay, can we hear the next one? Play the next bit. It's not serious. 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 Made really inappropriate. I don't know how to describe it, almost a, like basically like a sexual assault situation towards me when I was really drunk, pretty much passed out. Fuck um, you, know, this gets messier and messier. No, no, hold on, yeah, uh, okay, and, and I, I like got really upset and I broke down and I told George about it last week because it's really fucked me up. And George messaged Nick and apparently nearly got suspended and like it's fucking, I, like it's a really big mess. What's come to Milan to see you, who did he come with? Nick. He come with Nick, so Nick was with him. Yeah. And he sex and he, what did he do when you was well, Nick wasn't there at that moment. Nick had gone home. Was so, so we we were filming um, with we were filming with Lauren, and then they said like you've got to meet us, you've got to meet us, you've got to meet us. So we flew to Spain via Milan, met them in Milan, um, literally just had a coffee with them, where they basically just carried on threatening us um, and said you've got to do like Sky and or, or one mainstream media thing. Um, and then, then I went back to London to drop something off and to go then to Spain. So Caelan was left in Milan for one night. Nick left that night as well, I think. 
Um, and then this is when this thing happened. Caelan said that he was basically really wasted. That he thinks let, him, let himself into Caelan's room. Um, and basically, yeah, Caelan kind of woke up and was like half naked, like trying to do stuff with him. And then Caelan said no. And was like, oh, don't, you don't have to tell anyone, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Caelan's like really fucked up about it. He, so this was like three months ago, or two months ago. And Caelan only told me about it last week. So I messaged Nick saying, like, we need to talk. What the fuck is going on? Um, and then Nick said that he's, like, doing an investigation into it. George also messaged Panorama saying, guys, um, j- hope not hate raped Kaylin. Hello? Hi, Joe. It's Tommy Robinson. Oh, hi there. How's it going? Yeah, not bad. Obviously, you're aware I have a documentary coming out on Saturday. I'd just like to just ask you a couple of questions quickly about your involvement. Bear with me. Um, I'm not going to be able to do it over the phone. If you want, I'm not going to have, have to speak to uh, colleagues before I can do anything, I'm afraid. So you can't just answer why you were... Pre- what, were you present during an interview with Caelan Robertson and Panorama? I'm not going to have to talk about anything on the phone. Why I'm not? Afraid. Why um, not? Well, well, you can't just ring someone up. If you want to speak to me, you can uh, drop me an email and we can... Yeah, do- uh, you can this is just your opportunity to counter, counter what's being said. I'm not going to answer any questions over the phone, although I don't see what's the issue there is even if I was. Really. So were you and Nick Knowles present... During an interview of Caelan Robertson and Panorama. All I've, I've said everything I'm going to say to you, Tommy. I'm not going to answer any questions like that. If you want just to a yes or no. It's just a, it's a simple yes or no. Simply. Uh, look, Tommy, we're wasting time here. Okay. So. We must ensure we avoid bias or an imbalance of views. Our output will be based on fairness, openness, and straight dealing. Contributors will be treated honestly and with respect. There are people being intimidated in Black House. It's getting negative reviews against me. The men who are doing it, are present during your interviews, you're saying you're independent. Now John, when it comes to fake news, you're John Sweeney, so I'm going to separate you from, from these allegations that are being made. There are allegations. There are allegations. Okay, so, so these are allegations. These are allegations. And there's no evidence apart from your words or their words John. as to the substance of these allegations. Okay. No. And I'm like, we have a new eye on the table. Okay, okay. John, you to show would, you, would you tell anyone what they have to say in an interview about it? No, play the next one. We only the BBC. We only interview. Uh, we only do question areas. Um, so here's um, it's a volunteer army. I want you to be comfortable about it. So is there anything you don't want me to ask about? This is. I'm not supposed to ask this. I'm not supposed to ask this. I'm not supposed to ask this. So I'm going to ask you about, I'm going to take it through, what I want from you is the following, simple two steps. One, people like us, the BBC, the establishment, have not listened to what Tommy's been saying, um, and, uh, and that's bad. Yes. Um, and so the extent, to, and the extent to which the entire conversation about Islamist extremism about what that means um, for ordinary Brits up and down the country, um, closing that down, shutting it off as racist for a stop is wrong, and that's not bad. And that goes in the can, and you say that, and I, that will appear in the show. The second thing is, but there's something, um, my own personal experience, it was, it was difficult because I. Was a, a good trooper, and then suddenly I was friends with the dogs. But as a human being, he's funny and charismatic, and um, and has um, and can be great, great company. Um, and he's not he's not your um, he's not a Nazi. Um, number three. Partly because of the pressure, partly because of the chaos, you fall out. It's horrible when it turns on the bottom. There's and a those, those three elements yeah. are very good. And, um, and those three elements will appear in the show, I promise you. He has... Deal. 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 We have a proper ding dong. Okay. Because um, there's a lot of and, people there. And, and the good stuff, your stuff, goes in. So there you are. So oh. I don't have to on the record, John. I don't have a problem with that. You, you touched, you you touched, touched, I'm not, no, no, no. 
I'm saying I'm putting after a long conversation. I've got my options. Which you haven't. Which you haven't no, no, you, no, I've, I've got you six times telling that individual what they must say. And let's go to the next one. Gil- Gilligan wanted to make it sexualised and he wanted it to make it out like you basically like Harry Weinstein me. Oh my god, man. Because you're like a position of power. And you're you a know, And like, all this shit. And I was like, yeah, so. So when I'm being told, this isn't about you, John. When I'm being told that journalists are approaching people. Oh, oh, sorry, I don't understand the context. I'll tell you the context. I'll tell you the context. Okay. This, this specifically is not about you. And they do. But, okay. but, but when, when, I felt, when I felt sick, okay, okay because, because I found out that journalists were offering money to try and get a young girl to do a Harvey Weinstein story against me. Now, you're Panorama, you're John, you're, you're John Sweeney. So let me play the next I call him like a, a silly little man and stuff. I'm just shouting at him. Um, yeah, but um, oh, we love that. It was quite bad. Can we have that? I'll drop you in it. I'll have the thing. It will drop me in it. Everything will drop me in it. Not necessarily. It was really bad. We had this great big argument in Woburn High Street. Um, yeah, maybe. I suppose that, that, that I did give to the lawyers and they said, well, actually, this for the case doesn't really work because you're just having a dispute. doesn't really, doesn't really whatever. But I thought I'd record it just in case. Maybe I'll do that. That's, um... It's only what, audio. It's only how, audio. That's fine. How angry does it get? What's he gets really angry and then he runs away and gets in the car and drives off. And I shout after the car. It's really bad. We can clip that bit. We can clip that bit. We can clip that bit. My view about that is that, um... Um... It I was think doing a kind of... A, a kind of gender... A, a kind of sexual... Thing... Against Tom <laughs> Robinson is... The person I was talking to there was worried about whether she would be identified. Now clearly that tape is now in your hands, so it would seem that she's working. So you said she was clear. So no, 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 because this is what you were planning on doing. No, I've got you the evidence. You misunderstand me. I misunderstand So what I was trying to do okay. was to say to that source that if necessary we would change her gender to turn her, for example, into a man. I've done it on regular occasions where I have kind of difficult... So you're not realising I've got all of this text. I, I, I'm... You're hanging yourself. Yeah? Okay. You're hanging yourself. So John says I'm misrepresenting him. And in fact he was telling her he could change her gender so she could not be identified. Let's just hear that clip again. I think doing a kind of a, a kind of gender, a, a kind of sexual thing against Tommy Robinson is. We can do a kind of gender, a sexual thing against Tommy Robinson. Nice try, John. We should not present invented material as facts or knowingly do anything to mislead our audiences. I've done 10 years worth of you. Ten years worth of demonstrations, I've had cameras on me absolutely everywhere, and what they've been trying to expose and find is possibly that I'm a racist or I'm a homophobe or something like that. Yeah? I had you undercover for one boozy lunch, and you were repeatedly racist. Did you do a cab too? Um, I mean, I, I, I pre-booked because the dog makes it more difficult. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know why, don't you? Wine. Because. Oh, why? Yeah. It's loads of people. Asian camp drivers don't like taking dogs. You, how, how dare you? Okay, how yeah, dare yeah, yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Where's my phone? Say that on camera, right? <laughs> no. Racist. I, um, it's true. It's true. So this is the first one. So they might change my gender. They might change my And. I regret those words said, but the context is simple. That I had a real world experience like that. There was a court case in today's papers 
where an Asian taxi driver has lost his license. He was refusing to carry his license. You mean a missile? Uh, a blind dog. You know, you're doing exactly what you're doing. You're doing exactly what you're doing. You're blaming an entire continent when, let's face it, Islam believes dogs run clean, so it's Muslim taxi drivers that don't like dogs. But you have, you, you have stereotypes on the entire continent. Then that was enough for you, John. You want to then have a go at the Greeks. And it always goes down well. Yeah. Um, is um, <laughs> Jessica Redderin, which is thank you in Turkish. <laughs> when you're pissed, you don't want to piss off a Greek yourself speaking Turkish. Oh, really? And they know, and they don't. Anyway, never mind. They like it, but he's quite funny. Tommy, that's pathetic. That's a joke. You find it funny, joke, that that's the invasion of a country where women were pillaged and raped and murdered. Oh, okay. You find that funny. Don't know how to answer it. So I have many Turkish and Greek friends. Well, you're, uh, you're upset the type of community because you, uh, uh, you find it funny. You, you find it funny to speak in Turkish to them because you find that funny. Yeah, none, yeah, none, 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 none of this is fun. None of this is fun. None of this is fun. I have a little more in common. I have more in common with Tommy than most are reporting. Yeah. Uh, I used scumbag Irish background. Scumbag Irish background. So my family are some very rushed background because they're poor and my lips. I'm talking about myself. Uh, you said you have more in common with you have more in common with okay. a scumbag Irish background. Which uh, is a joke. That's a joke. So wait a second. Yes. It's a joke. So, so I'm very, 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 very proud of my Irish heritage. My great grandmother was a scumbag to you, John. No, it's a scumbag. I'm very proud of my Irish heritage. Yeah. If you get somebody like me talking to a source, and actually that source is in fact a mole working for Tommy Robinson. You then, know. in the context of a two, three hour conversation, there will happen. be moments where jokes happen. But you know, the people who have been, uh, you've been beaten up by Antifa, or other Antifa have attacked Tommy and you've been there. Those people and are the, brainwashed. And they're, they're lefty people. They're lefty... Self-hating whites. Um, I'd like to call them a honky. How do you use an operational term? How do you use an operational term? You call them honkies. Uh, hold on a second. You call them honkies. This is a conversation with your source. In what I'm trying to do is... It, it, it so is you're, trying, you're, trying to lay, you're trying to label me, and what's happened is in one afternoon... Oh, really? In one month, John, you've been... Okay, let me talk about homophobia. Let me talk about homophobia. Go on. You, you, you seem obsessed. You seem obsessed. You seem obsessed. You seem obsessed. So you have an obsession, because then you ask if Joe, if Joe Morgan's gay, right? Because they've not gone out and just had a mate that's gay. That's the difference. So you've got people up in like all these different places in, in the UK or whatever, and they're sort of... They, they, they've not they just never, had a gay mate. Ne have they never met a conservative then? No. <laughs> I, remember, I remember one line in particular, she said, oh, what do you think about LGBT or, or something? And I said, well, some of the stuff that gay people say is just ridiculous. And that's me being but that's the way. Okay, that's by the way, there's nothing wrong with it. You said something worse, I guess. Probably. Um, that's the way that I would speak they're, they're to just Kaylin. Ridiculous. You know. Yes. That's the way that I would speak to Kaylin in a okay. bar. You know, I think like they're ridiculous. If they should be shot. Well, yeah, exactly. No, obviously. No, I know. Did you say? No. Good. That's right, the thing good. because uh, yeah. because unbeknownst. I would to say that, by the way. I would. And they should be shot. <laughs> What are we talking about? Oh yeah, Joe's dick pics. Is he gay? On oh, my gay dance rubbish. He's a, a Bertie Wolf there, is he? He's a, a Bertie Wolf there, is he? He's a, a Bertie Wolf there, is he? May the best <laughs> man win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a bit weird. I'm, Jim Dobre. I'm not a joke. <laughs> He's a woofer. Woofer, cockney woman stands for woofer. Presenters, reporters and correspondents are the public face and voice of the BBC. Hoofda is when you ask, you're able to explain it. That is the most derogatory term you could use for a homosexual person. Oh, come on. My oldest friend at university is gay. Oh, come on. 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 Oh, come on
You're blackmailing. You're blackmailing people. Okay. You're okay. lying. You're 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 lying. you are lying 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 you are lying
Uh, not John, not, you're a fake news. You're fake news. No, 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 no. You've been creating a lie. You've been proving you create. told us this a lie. lie. And you're you, sir, are the, the source of the lie. <laughs> the idea that I'm homophobic, that's not true. John. This John. man has lied to us John. through people. John? You don't? So, hold on. You're right. Right. No, John, I suggest you're you pay yourself. Okay. Because okay. Once this goes live, which is going to, outside your offices on the 23rd of Fe- 3rd February, I've got all the evidence of you creating stories, telling sources, and it people oh, hold on say, a second. Outside your offices, because evidence. this is what you do all it's the time. It's all evidence, John. What you do you is you threaten people. people. It's all evidence. You people. always threaten people. And the hate. You're lying. You John, 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 don't talk about hate and when you're calling people with this. You intend oh, to. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, you are? Oh, you are? Sorry. What about. Are you sorry to the Greeks? Are you sorry to the Irish community? Are you sorry? Are you. You insult, you you insult a Greek woman by speaking not, Turkish to her. You in no, love, you said you found it funny. I didn't know it's on camera, John. It's, it's on camera, John. No, but what you, you said you would sexualize. You said you would sexualize my comments that were innocent. No. Yes, you did. No, you on didn't. camera, John. No, I didn't, John. No. The no. world's going anyway, to watch this, This is a lie. Good luck with your injunction. Good luck, my injunction. We John. haven't finished on panorama. No. And stop threatening people. You, you, you shouldn't have threatened Julia Redner. You think I'm finished? I've got another thing coming, okay. and I can give you that for free. Can you? Okay. Yeah. Good. Go and find the lawyer. I've, 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 already, I've already, already been with a lawyer, John. Okay? Right. I've, 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 I've already, already been with a lawyer. I've good. already dissected every one of your comments. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. What I've done is read the worst Wilson. possible thing Wilson. on it. I can defend you every can't second defend of it. Word of it. Uh, yes, I can. And on that note, and I will. You, and on you that note, all I'm saying the establishment. Is, you work for the establishment. None of these people are the establishment. No, you are. You're working. No, you're working with hope not hate. No, you are working with the government, and you are all going against me because I speak out against you. I'm not working with the British government. This is a campaign. I understand some of the anxieties that you have. I get that. And, so why, and would you, I, why would you be creating one? Why would you tell someone what to say about me? Why would you tell I them? didn't do that, and you're mischaracterising me. You didn't do that. <coughs> Everyone's no. going to watch this. No, I know everyone's going to watch it, and yeah. it will be good fun. But more yeah. people will watch the panorama. You, 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 fi- you find tell it. No, 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 please, no, please, no, no, please. No, no, this no, is my no, life, John. It's my life. You, it's my life, you, too. It's you, my life, you, too, you find it fun. You find it fun to tell someone that an innocent comment is sexualised. Do you know what that would do to my family? Do you know what that would do to my children? Do you know what you're doing? Do you know what you're doing to my family? You have no idea what you're doing to my family. If you'd have got away with what you were trying to do to me, you'd have ruined me. No, you're the broke by marriage. Hold on you're the broke by marriage. What, what you've done what is this. There's only no, one journalist in this room, John, and it's not you. Okay? Oh, really? Okay. That's it. Okay. You, 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 you have, you're a disgrace. And, and, you're, and, and in fact, anyone who's been taken down by Panorama, anyone has to challenge now because there is no integrity in any of the work you've done. You are a liar, you're a fraud, you're a racist, you're a homophobe, all in one interview. This is a lie. Excuse me, just for two executive producers on the program. Okay, well, you, you're in trouble as well. Um, you're all in trouble. You're all in trouble. We invited you for an interview today, yep. you haven't given us an interview. No, I haven't. I've exposed you, okay? You were trying to destroy my life. You have been contacting people. Why were Hope Not Hate present? Why were the leaders of a, of a far-left George Soros-funded organisation, why were they present during the interview of a person which you were goading to give bad information about me? Why were they present? Tell me. If this is a panorama documentary. Why were Hope Not Hate present? Um, this is a, an ongoing documentary. This is an establishment attack on me and your partner. And you've been exposed to the world tonight. So let's summarise what you've seen. You've seen the BBC, who pride themselves on being impartial and reporting the truth. You've witnessed the main man from Panorama telling someone what to say, brokering a deal on what they have to say about me. Now, if he's broken a deal with her, who else has he broken a deal with? Who else is being told what to say? They're scripting the documentary. They're also creating and inventing news sexual thing against Tommy Robinson. What else when we've got two other people saying they're being blackmailed in order to give negative reviews of me? Who else would have participated in this documentary? What else was going to be said? What other lies and manufactured evidence would there have been on this documentary? You've seen the contempt they have for the working class. The contempt they have for you, the licence fee payer. You pay your licence fee, and if you don't, you're taken to court. Just so the elitist 
fake news journalists can travel this country drinking champagne on your expense. Now, if there's one thing that symbolizes the BBC, we all know about the fake news. I've just proved to you that they create the fake news, that it's not impartial, that they work with far left extremist organizations. That's been proven. If there's one thing that symbolizes them, the BBC covered for Jimmy Savile. They covered for Stuart Hall. Up to 100 children were raped and abused, many of them on the property of this organization. Let me show you this statue that is at the entrance to the BBC. That statue was sculptured by a man called Eric Gill. Eric Gill was a paedophile. He raped his own daughters. He had sex with animals. He had an insidious relationship with his sister. When the Catholic Church become aware of this man's crimes, they removed and covered all sculptures made by him. The BBC refused to. They were asked to, but they refused to. If you have disgust now, and you're fed up with paying for this, or for the propaganda they use against you, for the negative portrayal of Brexit. If you're fed up with all of these things, what can you do? I'll show you what I'm gonna do, and I hope you follow my lead. You can legally not have a TV license in the UK. You do not have to have one, okay? None of us ask for the BBC to come into our homes and display their programs on our TVs. If you're fed up of paying for their propaganda, when you don't even watch their shows, you can follow the steps I'm about to take you through now to end that. There's a few things you need to know once you've filled out these forms. It's a myth that the BBC can sit outside your house and detect that you're watching TV. That is a myth, it's not true. If the BBC TV inspector knocks at your door, you can, be polite, you should be polite. But you can open your door, say I don't need a TV license, I haven't got one, goodbye, I don't watch live TV. That's it, they have no rights to come into your home. It's obvious that if a TV license inspector walked past your front window and you had your wind curtains open and you were watching Panorama on BBC, which I don't think you will be, if you're watching BBC, they will find you. But you do not have to have a TV license. And I'm gonna take you through the steps. I'm gonna ask, please follow these steps now. Follow exactly what I'm about to do. Go to www.tvlicensing.co.uk. You'll find a link, declare no license needed. Upon clicking this, you'll be brought to another page where they try to convince you you need a license, even though you legally don't. Ignore that and click the button that says, tell us you don't need a license. Step one, select the type of property you live at. Complete name, email, and phone number. Step two, enter your property address. Step three, tick the three boxes for the declaration. You will then be asked what date you want to start watching live TV again. Tick the button to the right where it declares I have no plans to do this. Then click the reason for not needing a TV license. I'm sorry, but John Sweeney is not an option. Step four, review and confirm, click submit. You are now license free. Congratulations, you've just saved yourself 155 pound a year. You can now afford to go to the pub and celebrate. I know. How about champagne and double gin? Then some red wine. Two brandies, two lemon cellos. Creme de cassis, Kia Royale, blackcurrant liquor and champagne, flaming Zambuca, and two Kia Royales. Enjoy. So, if you're fed up with the BBC, then sign our petition at www.endthestealthtax.com. I'll personally find and track down the head of the BBC, I'll hand it to him, and I'll give it to our government. And you'll see it on our next video. Thank you.